Hi students! How have you been? I've heard you have been waiting for our new lesson in English 8. And I'm here to discuss to you our new lesson here in TV Escuela. I am teacher Carlo Orcajada Kasumpong from Mabini National High School, Mabini District. And I will be with you today as we explore another meaningful and exciting English lesson for today. But before we start our lesson, I wanted you to prepare the following. Your self-learning module for quarter 3, module 1, your pen and paper, and of course, yourself. Just few reminders before I start our lesson. This lesson contains many paragraphs to read. So prepare yourself as we will explore the lesson examining biases for and against made by the author. Are you ready? I guess you are. Let us start. I'm going to let you pick between two choices. Choose the one that you like the best. Singing or dancing? Burger or fries? Stay at home or travel? Alone or in company? Swimming or hiking? Have you made your best choice based on the given choices? How have you picked those? Did you pick based on your favorites? Sometimes, our choices and preferences lead us to become biased. Do you know what bias is? To give you a hint, I want you to study and look at these examples. First, cats are not good for anything. Second, I like all the food being served, but there's no greater than spaghetti. Third, I don't like tumbang preso anymore. I am already a teenager. What have you observed with the following statements? Yes, that's right. These statements are unfair preference for or against something. Why is it unfair? Because it is based on opinion or generalization, not usually from facts. In another definition, bias means that a person prefers an idea and possibly doesn't give equal chance to a different idea. There are certain types of paragraph that shows author's bias. It may be for or against the topic that the author has made. Since this lesson is about enhancing your skills in examining bias in the text, let us now have an activity. Get ready with yourselves as we will now do some reading tasks. Are you ready? I will read to you the text and listen very carefully as I read the lines. Do not forget to take down important ideas found in the text. First, I strongly agree that lotteries should be banned. I strongly believe that lotteries are a waste of money. Every time we buy the lottery, we have less money to buy things we need, such as medicines or food. Another reason is that playing the lottery is addictive. When we buy a lottery ticket and we don't win, we may buy more and more tickets. Finally, I consider that playing the lottery is not a really good chance to make money because we can't use our abilities or skills to win the lottery. Winning the lottery depends only on luck. To conclude, I believe that it is not a good idea to buy the lottery because it is a waste of money, it is addictive, 
and it is not really a good chance to make money. What do you think is the text all about? Yes, you are right. It's all about the lottery. Do you think the author showed bias in the way he presented the thoughts? Why do you think so? Yes, you're right. The author is biased about lottery. Is he in favor or against lottery? Yes, you're right again. He is against the lottery. Let us go back to the text and identify what are those sentences that tell us the text is biased. The sentences, I strongly believe the lotteries are a waste of money. I believe that it is not a good idea to buy the lottery because it is a waste of money, it is addictive, and it is not really a good chance to make money. Show biases against lottery. Now, let us have another text. Clap for the women in your life. She has made your world so beautiful and graceful. Express her your love, understand her challenges, allow her to express her feelings, listen to her. Do everything which you have missed due to your busy schedule. Say, love you, Sindagi, and thank God for this beautiful creation called human beings. Stay home, stay safe, say thanks to all the doctors, nurses, workers, those who are working selflessly for your safety. Do you think the excerpt showed bias? What topic is she talking about? Yes, that's another point for you. The text is biased and she is giving more preferences to women. Let us go back with the excerpt and let us identify the sentence that showed bias. Which sentence from the excerpt showed bias? The sentence, She has made your world so beautiful and graceful. Express her your love. Understand her challenges. Allow her to express her feelings. Listen to her shows bias in the text. Now, have you gotten the idea about biases? How did you find those? Remember that it is easy to find biases in the text if you look for generalization, not being specific, or making broad statements. Exaggerations, stretching the truth. Loaded words, Words that make you feel emotional. Opinions, the way the authors feel or believe. As I have said previously, this lesson contains a lot of reading text. Are you still with me? We are now about to end the lesson. Before I proceed, I would like to ask you a question. Which would you prefer? face-to-face -face classes or modular learning? Write your answer on the comment section. For your evaluation, you're going to read a text from Larry Ferlazzo, which discusses on what students are really thinking about online learning. I will be presenting to you three paragraphs which talk about students' ideas and be ready to identify the lines that show biases. After which, I want you to identify if the author is against the idea or in support to the idea. Are my instructions clear? Okay, here we go. Online learning has been difficult. I feel pressured to try and hurry to finish and turn in all of my assignments on time. Most of my assignments are due at the same time and a lot of them are time consuming. As a student, my online experience has been interesting. What I like about this experience is that I have more time to talk to my family 
and call or text some friends. I get to do schoolwork from home and I have time for self-care. I like that I kind of get to choose which classes I should work on first and which I could wait to do after. My experience with online learning is very stressful and hard. I felt this way because of how hard it is for me to understand the assignments and having to not be able to check with our teacher face to face if I am doing it correctly or not. It doesn't make me confident because I want to make sure that I am actually doing the assignment correctly in order to deserve the credit for it. Now, let us check your answers. For item number one, the author is biased against the topic. The sentences that show bias are, Online learning has been difficult. I feel pressured. For item number two, the author is biased for the topic. It is shown by the statement, My online experience has been interesting. For item number three, the author is biased against the topic. It is observed in the sentence, My experience with online learning is very stressful and hard. How was the evaluation? Did you get a perfect score? Wow, that is so nice of you. If you miss an item, don't worry. You still have more time to review our lessons. How have you been feeling lately about the topic that we discussed? What have you learned? Before we end our class, I want you to remember the following. Bias is an unbalanced weight in favor of or against an idea or a thing. Bias can exist on views on religion, political ideology, financial influences, misfortune, and more. Sometimes, people may develop biases for or against another person depending on the strong inclination on his or her mind. A bias may sometimes be favorable or unfavorable. And that's it for our class today. I hope you have learned something and apply the lessons you have learned in reality. If you have some questions regarding this lesson, do not be shy to ask your teachers for help. You can call or text them or even send a message through your messenger accounts. This is your English A teacher, Carlo Orcajada Kasumpong from Mabini National High School, Mabini District saying, Dito sa TV Escuela, sa pag-aaral, sama-sama. Bye-bye!